Welcome to our podcast, Forward Through Faith, a Visleta Lutheran Mission Human Care, where the Word of God relates to you. Feliz Año Nuevo. Welcome back to Forward Through Faith, a ministry of the Isleta Lutheran Mission in beautiful El Paso, Texas, where we don't get a lot of snow. So, But I'm pretty sure we're freezing anyway. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Scott Yingle. I am here with... My name is Luz Soto, and we have a guest with us again. Um, still with us is Pastor Justin Bangert from Oklahoma. I will not sing this time. But we are so very excited to have you with us again, Justin. Thank you. Yeah, we all thank you for that. Um, it's uh, no, it's one of the cool things, um, being able to come down and uh, help out here at Yisleta Lutheran Mission to do a few uh, projects that we have. So it's been um, really a great time, a great experience for us, a great, uh, really a fantastic thing for our church, uh, Holy Trinity Lutheran Church in Edmond, Oklahoma. We've been able to come down here. This is your third time. This is my fourth trip, I Your think. fourth trip. Um, this is the whole team's third year. Yeah, whole year. team's third year, and it's been amazing. We've got um, several new people who came along this time around, several returners, so it's been a really great trip, and uh, you're been able to get a whole lot done. So. You're one of what I like to call our generational teams. Yeah. So we have 15-year-old all the way up to 79-year-old. 16 today, actually. Six, oh, that's As today. of today. Today's, today's our first well, birthday. Yeah. When we're Not recording. Not on the day. Right. <laughs> yeah, the day we're recording. But, um, but it, uh, yeah, so we go 16 all the way up to basically 80. 80. So, um, so it's, uh, it's pretty awesome to see that, that generational span and to watch the way that they work together, the mentoring that happens, the... Um, playing around, the joking, um, the, all the kids, all these teenagers have really taken up to uh, what they call Sir Lewis. Yeah. Um, he is our 79-year-old, soon to be 80, and he's taken them all under his wing, and it's awesome to watch for everybody else. It's helping mature Harper, make him <laughs> older, getting to work and learn a lot of the new skills that he probably never did before, and I think it's helping Lewis feel a lot younger, so it's kind of a magical place here. Yeah, it's been awesome. They also have gotten a whole bunch of new sayings. Uh, like <laughs> apparently yesterday when it was time for lunch, he said he says at lunchtime. They said probably, and apparently his response was probably won't feed the bulldog. So it was, <laughs> I said that's one of those I've never heard in my entire life, but that definitely is going to go along with me as well. So. Yes, that, that that actually makes a lot of sense. Probably won't feed the bulldogs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Right, so we are here today. Um, let's go ahead and open up in prayer before we dive into our next parable. As you know, our last, uh, our few episodes that we have done, this is actually episode number nine, I want to say. Oh, wow. We're almost at the double digits, guys. Um, this is a um, series that we're doing on what is the kingdom of God. And we've been touching on different parables that Jesus teaches throughout the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke. And this particular uh, parable we're going to be on is found in Matthew and in Luke. And we're going to be able to share um, a lot of in-depth, especially because uh, Pastor uh, Justin has a sermon ready to go for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so this should be I promise fun. I won't be doing that for you. So. <laughs> So let's go ahead and open up in prayer, and then we can go ahead and get right into our reading. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for blessing us with a new year. We just ask you, Father, that you remind us that we need to keep our eyes on you, our focus on you, and that if we do stray, you will seek us out. What a wonderful God you are, that you come to us instead of waiting for us to come to you, especially because it's impossible. It's impossible for us to come to you. So we thank you that you came down to us, that you meet us every divine worship service, that you meet us through baptism, through the bread and the wine that becomes your flesh and blood given for our sins. And we just ask you, Father, that you meet us through your word and that you be here with us and with all those who hear these words. And let it be the words that they need to have the eyes of their heart and their soul open to the reality of who you are an awesome, wonderful God who forgives our sins. If we believe in Jesus Christ, that is all. Thank you for giving us your son. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. 
the parable of the lost sheep from Matthew chapter 18, starting at verse 10. Jesus says, See that you do not despise one of these little ones. For I tell you that in heaven, their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. What do you think? If a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray, does he not leave the ninety... He, does he not leave the 99 on the mountains and go into search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it truly, I say to you, he rejoices over it more than other over the 99 who went astray. So it's not the will of my Father who is in heaven that one of these little ones should perish. And it's also one that we find in Luke, and I can just read the Luke reference real quick. And the fascinating part about this is this would be uh, Luke 15, starting with... I'm actually going to start at verse 1 through 7, just so everyone kind of has that. And this is Jesus preaching and teaching. It says, All the tax collectors and sinners were approaching to listen to Jesus. The Pharisees and scribes were complaining. This man welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. What man among you who has a hundred sheep and loses one of them does not leave the ninety-nine in the open field and go after the lost one until he finds it? When he has found it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and coming home, calls his friends and neighbors together, saying to them, Rejoice with me, because I found my lost sheep. I tell you, in the same way, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who don't need repentance. So we do see a little bit of difference in terms of the way that they would have heard it. And one of the things very well could be, this probably isn't the only time Jesus used this parable because um, it's a pretty poignant and on-the-nose reference that we, ma- that we see him making in a couple of different places there. Um, it's a, something, I would argue, one of the most well-known parables that Jesus has is the parable of the lost sheep. We see it in all these different pictures. We see pictures of Jesus with the sheep on his shoulders. We see pictures of Jesus standing there and sheep all around him and him as the shepherd. And so it's one that we see all over in art, we see it in literature, we see it just, you could say, as a part of daily culture. And um, it kind of resonates within us. I mean, yeah. at some point or another, most of us have felt lost um, as children. <laughs> I don't know if you guys ever experienced getting lost in the um, store. I know I did. Um, Walmart could get pretty big for a seven-year-old when she can't find her mom, right? Yeah. But to be found like the relief of a parent because you guys are parents so maybe maybe you weren't lost in the store but maybe you lost your kids in the store um but you're not going to admit that right because who would oh yeah no i've mm. lost him plenty of times so. <laughs> <laughs> but that the relief that you felt when you found him and and you grabbed him and you hugged him and you're like oh thank god you know it's it's and the amazing part is they usually don't re- realize that they are lost mm-hmm. because they're wandering off at whatever thing that they found them or whatever caught the their toy attention, aisle. and they just wander <laughs> away, and it's like, oh, wait a second, where'd my child go? No, right? no, for sure. And you're frantically looking, and the kid's just over there like, oh, you know, it's very rare. I mean, occasionally you'll have a kid crying, but most of them are pretty smart. You know, you find an adult with the vest of the store, and I can't find my mom. But the relief that is found, so it it resonates in most of us, this particular parable of the lost sheep, to be found. It's like to be found. It's it's something that I think at one point or another we all desire. We all desire not only to be found, but for someone to actively seeking, because it's not like Jesus, you know, counted 99 and said, oh, just go along my way, maybe I'll trip over it or something. Oh, there you are. No, he he literally leaves the 99 to seek for the ones who are lost. Yeah, and one of the things, and um, to quote him, and Pastor Joshua Brackage at Holy Trinity, he has made the comment, and like he pointed out, it's really interesting when you read these parables too, because if we think about it, there's 99 sheep that are just hanging out, doing what they're supposed to do, and they're watching one just wander away. And they didn't stop and so, it. And they're not stopping it. It's just like, all right, have fun. Good luck. And so it, like his point is, is that he goes, what are those other 99 doing? What's part of their job? And part of their job is hopefully to keep that thing around yeah. as well, and instead of just letting it wander off to its own destruction. And yeah. it's, but to Jesus's point here too is, as Christians, that's part of 
we have that blessing in the sense that we can think of ourselves as being a part of the 99, that, oh, we've been found and so we're good. But that's not really the point that he's getting at here. The point is, is how God will search, just like a parent searching for a child, frantically looking all over the place, high and low, to find it, leaving the others if needed, and going off to find that one. And that's something that really, when you think about it, goes outside of the way that our world would think makes sense. Because why would you give up 99 sheep just to find one that continually wanders away? And But the thing is, in God's world, in God's kingdom, that's how it works. God desires all men and women to be saved. Yeah. That's his desire. And uh, I love in the Matthew text how Jesus, it, one of the things that he's really talking about too here is we see at the very beginning of Matthew 18, this little debate amongst the apostles of which one of us is the best, which one is the greatest. And Jesus basically sets a child in the middle and goes, hey, you got to be like this child to enter into the kingdom of heaven. And so for especially the apostles, who probably thought they were pretty awesome stuff at this point, hearing that, Man, I'm that sure must have was, been humbling. Yeah, that was kind of a kick to them. It was like, whoa, wait a second. Especially in a time and in a culture where children, I mean, they didn't really have much say or power over anything. Yeah. They couldn't decide what to eat for dinner. They can't decide um, what clothes to wear. They can't decide where to live. I mean, they have Even no marriages power. were arranged. Yeah. yeah, exactly. They can't decide on their husband or their wife. I mean, or sometimes even their career. If their father was a fisherman, they're going to be a fisherman. But I want to be a carpenter. Well, you're going to be a fisherman because your daddy's a fisherman. And that just, for Jesus to do that, to let them know, it's like you are to be completely dependent yeah. on me to be mm -hmm. the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And that means that you understand that it's not in your power, it's not in your authority, and it's not in your control as to what you can and cannot do, what you will and will not do. You are completely dependent on me for everything. And going back to this lost sheep, I mean, talk about complete dependence. You're yeah. out there, and you imagine being a little sheep, and you all of a sudden realize... Or maybe you don't because you're too busy. It's like, oh, another tuft of grass. Oh, there's another one. Oh, look, a marigold. Yum, right? And then you hear the howl of the wolf. And it's, it's so funny, too. Like, um, you've ever been around sheep, how they are, I call them the most useless creatures on earth, <laughs> um, which, I mean, they give us wool, so sure. That's, <laughs> but, and they're I mean, so cute. They have, they're, ugh, they have no <laughs> natural defense whatsoever. And so it's like, if that animal comes looking for them to eat it, all they can do is baw at it. Well, I mean, they can't even run away. I mean, it's they are totally 100% useless. Useless in the face of danger. Like I mean, they can't even kick out. Like there's just no. Yeah, I mean, you got some animals that can at least kick. You have some animals that might make a horrible smell. A sheep can make an awful sound. That's really about it. And it's amazing because when Jesus is comparing us for instance to sheep that's not a good thing um, <laughs> just so you know if you're thinking but, of sheep oh they're so cute and woolly and cuddly no it's that's not it <laughs> yeah I, I, and a lot of this comes from like childhood trauma of having to be at the county fair with <laughs> sheep around and i had pigs which are a lot cleaner and smarter animals but <laughs> the point is is that and even though like i bacon. guess you could argue yeah and, and people like bacon, but nobody likes Baha sheep. Yeah. But it's amazing because you get this idea what Jesus is telling them is he's telling us, well, no, without me, without our Heavenly Father, you're as useless as a sheep in the face of the enemy, danger. in the face of danger. And trying to protect yourself and trying the survival of the fittest. Without me, there is no survival of the fittest yeah, for exactly. you. Exactly. Survival of the fittest isn't a thing for people apart from Christ. I mean, no. <laughs> um, because ultimately, in the end, we're all going to fail. No matter whether you're Christian or non-Christian, in the end, death gets you. Mm -hmm. And the reality that we look at with this is that we have no defense against death. No. And but except one except the one yeah and which is Jesus Christ it's the shepherd who is out hunting for that lost sheep um it doesn't want us to be devoured by the evil one yeah the one that we just ball at yeah and the one that honestly and you think about it too 
in a lot of cases, we just mindlessly follow. Mm -hmm. um, because it happens to be wandering in a direction that's like, oh, it looks more fun over there, without realizing that what we're actually doing is we're wandering to our own demise. And Jesus even basically hints at that pretty, doesn't really hint at it, he's pretty direct, really. When you look at in Matthew 18, verse 5, Jesus talking about the children, whoever receives one such child, my name receives me, but whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin, be better have a great millstone fast around their neck and be drowned into the depth of the sea. And so, I mean, that's kind of, that's pretty on the nose as far as what Jesus' opinion there is, is look, you have a responsibility not only as Christians, but you have a responsibility to the people around you as well. Keep them secure, keep them safe. If somebody's erring, if somebody's wandering away, don't be like the other 99 sitting there watching it wander or say something. That's, Recognize that somebody's wandering to their own destruction and their own demise. And that's what I was wanting to yeah. mention is the, what is the application yeah. of this, this, of these parables to you and I, mm -hmm. as we, we call ourselves, you know, if we call ourselves Christians, if we call ourselves the church, Okay, what is this application to us? Yeah. If there's someone that's wandered away. Well, see, and that's the interesting thing because you're bringing up something that I, I, I agree on, on both, but I'm thinking um, in a different way because that's just the way I do. But you have the 99 sheep, right, that watch the one sheep walk off and they just watch mm -hmm. and they baa and they go back to their grass, right? But... On the other hand, is our, our, to have a second sheep wander after the first one to try to bring it back. So now you have 98 and you have two. <laughs> and you, honestly, you honestly think that's going to end, uh, end really well? And that second one's going to be like, yo, you really should come back. Oh, no, you make a good point, and they come back. I, I mean, at, at some point, you're going to have a nice little line of sheep you know, I'm not yeah. saying that you don't, you know, you don't reach out to your brother and your sister that you're noticing is struggling, is pulling away from the church. Hey, what's going on and everything. But I think the, the point of this particular parable is that it's not dependent on you. Yeah, I think it's the good shepherd that's going to look for them. But you do your, you do your and thing. Bring you, back. you call them, you whistle. Hey, we're over here. You come and join us over here. But to go after them yourselves it's it, it's dangerous perilous to yourself as well for sure but i think one of the pieces to keep in mind though of mm -hmm. all of this is in both the matthew as well as in the luke jesus really is kind of making this point about who to whom the kingdom of heaven belongs talking about this idea of in the end the good shepherd brings the wandering sheep back to the fold no matter in this case it's 99 and 1 could be 98, could be 97, whatever the situation is, but recognizing that, yeah, we don't go alone. When, mm -hmm. we, when we might go out to put, try to bring someone back in, to recognize that there is danger around you, that you don't just wander out blindly, but what you're doing is you're seeking out the one. And that's one of the amazing things, too, that if you think the shepherd in this case, and I mean one of the logical realities that we already kind of touched on, you have one sheep that continually wanders away, it would be a lot easier for the shepherd to just say, oh, well, that sheep, just let it go. And But that's not how our good shepherd works. Our good shepherd doesn't abandon because of foolishness, but seeks it out and then brings it back to where it belongs. And so just like us, if we wander away, if we wander in search of a friend who's wandered and suddenly get caught with them, our good shepherd's still seeking us out. Mm -hmm. He's always searching. He's always looking for the And I think that that's where the, the focus sheep. is, you know, the focus mm -hmm. is on the fact that the shepherd is the one. And if you're part of that search party, awesome. Recognize who shepherd, you're following. But it's the shepherd yes. that is seeking, not you. For sure. It's the shepherd that is rescuing, not you. Maybe you're along with him and tripping along, right? He occasionally has to pull you in because you can't not be by his side. I mean, I've heard of some sheep that they might as well be dogs because they just won't leave their shepherd, you know? So maybe that might be the case, but you're not the one that's seeking. You're not the one that's rescuing. Yeah. None, none of us save people. Yeah, we don't save ourselves. Jesus does, mm -hmm. but Jesus calls us to go out into the 
into the streets, into the bushes, and to guide people, to tell people, go and make disciples of all nations. Yeah. We can't be a we can't be a, a church of Pharisees and sit and well they they can't come back until they get their act together. Or they sort their life out. No, Jesus went to Zacchaeus, a tax collector. He went to Matthew. Um, Matthew, a tax collector. Yeah, a tax he collector. went to a woman at the well that had a nefarious background. He went to fishermen, and guess what? He came to Scott and each one, you know, each one of us. And we have to be a church that is open to going out after people in our own families. And once again, I agree, that that. I agree with that. I agree with that. And it's not but I like that Justin saves them. stated, the focus is where it's important. Because Keeping your I have eye on seen, who you're looking for. Because I have seen what happens when a person focuses on, I have to go after the lost sheep. Yeah. And I have seen that person end up losing a lot mm -hmm. because he went after the lost sheep. Yeah. But and he never brought the lost sheep. He left the 99 sheep behind, and he lost himself. Yeah. Why? Because he wasn't focused on, it's the shepherd that does the seeking. It's the shepherd that does the searching. Mm -hmm. It's the shepherd that does the rescuing. So when we go out there, we have to remember that it's not on me. And if I find that lost sheep and the lost sheep tells me, I don't want to come back, I did my job. I yeah. came and I told you, you need to come back to the fold. This is where it's safe. Mm -hmm. This is where you'll be taken care of, where there'll be oil for your head, and there will be fields of grass and calm waters. Well, I don't want to go back. I want to figure out what those mountains over there have. Okay, then I'm going back. But I already told you. But see, that's, that's the, the, the danger that if we don't stay focused on who does the rescuing. I love the way you brought up. Sheep are 100% useless. So if we don't have Jesus with us when we go seeking those who wander, then we're going to get lost too. I think one of the pieces, and we see it in 1 Peter 2, Peter talks about how we were once straying like sheep and now have returned to the shepherd, the overseer of our soul. Um, we don't behave, or we're not called to behave anymore as sheep who are wandering, instead to listen to the voice of our the good shepherd. shepherd, to obey the commands he gives, return to him when he bids us come. And then when that other sheep comes back in, that one that wandered away, the one that we might have had some, we might have tried to grab them on their way out, we might have tried to bite them, Not I don't sure know, as they're game. going back in, whatever it is. But recognizing that when that one comes back, instead of looking at it and judging it, we surround it. Have a party for it. Mm -hmm. Celebrate its return. And as we celebrate with the other sheep, we celebrate that one has been lost, has made its way back home. Mm -hmm. And recognizing that it's now back in the safety of the fold and then keeping our eye out for one another as well. And that's part of what we're just called to do as a church, what we're called to be as people of God, is to, and like as you guys do here, worrying about people outside your own walls, but also recognizing the people inside. Mm -hmm. and being there for them and making sure first, okay, everybody's doing okay, everybody's doing well today, all right, now we're good to go to head out and making sure that first our own area is secure first yeah, if before we, have we go out because otherwise, the fold, otherwise that, the fold itself is just yeah. losing sheep left and right. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, one of the things, and I, like I, Scott mentioned, I actually did a sermon on this, and I read a really cool story about it that um, to share. There was a priest who was wandering around um, kind of at the time in the 1930s and he had a conversation with a shepherd, an Arab shepherd who probably was in very similar area and keeping sheep in much the same way as what during the time of Jesus in the Palestinian desert. Um, the priest asked the shepherd when he looked at the sheepfold he noticed something really odd in the sense that there's no gate. He was like that seems really odd and kind of counterproductive like you'd think there'd be a gate on it. And what happened was the shepherd replied, no, we don't have a gate. Instead, what the shepherd does is he lays his body across the entrance at night to ensure that nothing could get in nor get out. Hmm. And he does that to ensure the safety of the sheep with his own body. Hmm. Recognizing that for us, our gatekeeper is our good shepherd, Jesus Christ. He keeps us safe within the fold. He keeps us safe from whatever dangers there are outside. And then also recognizing that our own good shepherd gave up his life 
on behalf of the sheep that are in the fold to keep to keep them there he laid down his life yeah yeah and i think and as we kind of look and as we get prepare for this new year to recognize that in so many ways so many ways we see multiple places where people might be wandering away but always to keep in mind part of our responsibility and our calling as christians is to watch out for them, to seek them out when they get lost, but also to always keep our eyes on that point that our shepherd, when he calls us to come running, just like think, he calls yeah. us to do. And I think um, I read once, and since you actually had firsthand experience, you'd be able to uh, verify whether this is true. But I read once that the reason why uh, Jesus states, the sheep know my voice. It's not the sheep know my face. It's the sheep know my voice is because a sheep cannot lift its head up the way that dogs do. So dogs can actually look up at us, you know, but sheep can't. They only, their neck apparently has a, a certain amount of bones and only allows. So um, I read about this and I thought that makes perfect sense. These sheep know who the shepherd is because the shepherd has been talking to them day in and day out, when he guides them to the water, when he guides them to the field. So it's the voice that they hear. The voice they of the shepherd. They don't see exactly the voice of the shepherd. So they understand when another voice comes along, that that's not the same. That does not sound like the voice that's been taking care of me all this time. Yeah, honestly, I'm not entirely positive on that. Yeah. It wouldn't shock me because, like I said, sheep, well, <laughs> they just aren't exactly the most... Uh, they haven't shall we say uh, robust of creatures but um, like I can even speak to even just deer for instance deer don't look up they can't and so that's why when you talk about like deer stands why hunters will be up top and so what deer have to do is rely on their visual on the ground which isn't going to be great either mm-hmm. but, but the biggest hearing. one is their hearing mm-hmm. and they hear something that's off and they recognize oh that's a danger that's not and normal they run off. and they run um but keeping that in mind, they also run a lot faster than sheep. So, um, <laughs> and they got but, horns. Yeah, and they do have horns. They can at least put up, and they can kick too. But anyway, no, it's it, it's such an like these parables of the lost sheep. There's so there's so much that you could get into that we could go. I'm sure a lot longer than even just the <laughs> amount of time that's allotted since we're already getting the uh, times up signal. But it um. It wasn't from anyone else. It was from Scott. But uh, <laughs> it's, uh, why don't it's you really... Why out him? Why don't you? <laughs> He's a timekeeper. Yeah, Scott's a timekeeper. But no, it's it's such a cool way to start off the new year because recognizing that, yeah, we can't do anything by ourselves. Um, as sheep, we are totally functionally useless, especially in the face of an enemy. Um, but also recognizing that we have someone who literally puts put his life on the line, gave it up for us. And he's the one who keeps us safe. He's the gatekeeper. He's the one who actually is there and makes the promise that when you wander, I'm going to come and find you no matter what. And that that's doesn't mean go wandering incredible... off. You yeah, know? that's but not an invitation. Just, no, it's but, not an invitation. But it's a promise. But it's a promise. Yeah, that, yeah, by all means, I am there. And that's such a cool promise that we've been given. And something that as Christians, we should hold on to every single day. Great way, a, great way to start the new year. Yeah, and there's a reason why David in the 23rd Psalm, why that's such a love psalm, um, talking about the Good Shepherd, um, that it's there's so many connections that you make all over Scripture um, to this idea of our amazing Shepherd Jesus Christ. Awesome. Great discussion. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Pastor, for being here. Yeah. We'll, uh, we'll wait to hear from you another time, too, when you get back down here to the mission. Sounds so. great. All right. Luce, would you like to close us in prayer today? Sure. Father God, we thank you for this day, and we thank you for the opportunity to come into your word, to be able to see who you are and who we are to you. We ask you, Father, that you remind us that we are to look out for one another, that we need to take care of each other, Father, but always remind us that you're the one who does the seeking You're the one who does the rescuing, and we will rejoice when you bring back our brothers and sisters that have wandered off. Father, we pray for each one of them, brothers, sisters, daughters, sons, mothers, fathers, 
Oh, Father, there are so many people that have wandered away from you, Father. We pray that we ask you that you bring them back into the fold where it is safe because it is with you. And we ask you, Father, that you remind us that we are to rejoice. We are not to demand explanations. We are not to hold resentment. And we are not to stick our nose up in the air. We are to rejoice. Thank you so much for all that you give us in your name, Father Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. To keep learning more about God's Word, join us at San Pablo Lutheran Church located at 301 South Chutes in El Paso, Texas. Or call us at 915-858-2588. To learn more about our ministries, visit our website www.ylm.org.